Hi, aquaponics enthusiasts. Uh, I saw that you really enjoyed the video about uh, the experiment and the difference of growth between uh, aquaponics and uh, the classic garden that I made a few days ago. Um, today, I would like to make a new video, which is going to be basically um, the demonstration of how to make cuttings in aquaponics. So what I propose you is to do some cuttings today and uh, in a week time I'm going to show you the result of the cuttings in the aquaponic system. So obviously you're going to see all this in one video but for me it's going to be uh, different, uh, different videos that I'm going to put together to make these videos that you are watching right now. So as you know, uh, for me, aquaponics is one of the best way to multiply the plants in your aquaponic system, but also in a garden. Uh, so in aquaponics, we got a specific environment where we got moisture, we got um, a nutrient, and uh, there is oxygen as well. So it's perfect if you want to do some cuttings, you can put them straight in the grow bed. So I already made some video to explain you um, uh, this fact basically uh, how you can use cuttings to uh, to grow trees to grow plants uh, for your classic garden but in this video today what we're going to do together we're going to go in the garden we're going to cut some plants and we're going to put them in the aquaponic system to see the results okay so i got this type of plant um, it looks a bit like echinacea to me but i don't know what it is to be honest i got some here and there so I'm going to do some cuttings and we're going to find out uh, if it works well in aquaponics or not. So ideally I would like to do some cuttings where we don't have little flowers uh, because all the cuttings that I can see to cut here they all have those uh, flowers that are on it and obviously uh, it's not great for a cutting to put the energy in the flowers. So here I see one without any so I make uh, this one. Okay, so we have a fair few of those uh, little plants here. So those little cuttings, they are probably going to be fine. It's going to be enough. Five of them for the trial. Let's see if we can find another plant to add in this uh, experiment. So here we have some little flowers, uh, the white one, not the capucine, but the white ones. Um, that are quite nice. So let's take some cuttings from here, if I can. So I have my cuttings. Uh, the problem is there is no room for them. <laughs> the aquaponic system is quite full, so I will try to put here, uh, here and there, I will put a few but uh, I'm not going to plant everything. So here uh, we have some type of succulents. That is not a plant that normally grows well, but I, I did a cutting to see what it would give. So let's see if I take the plant now. What do we have? Oh yeah. You see all the roots? That's a nice cutting from a succulent. Who would think a succulent in aquaponics? I always uh, advise to not put succulent in aquaponics because I don't think they go well. But for this time, uh, this one has given some really nice roots. So that's a little baby plant that you can have at home. Uh, very easy to do with aquaponics. And now obviously you don't leave it in the system, otherwise after a while I don't think it would go well anyway. But you see for the roots, it works really well. I would love to, to show you a bit better. You can see those roots. It's really working. Another cutting that I made a few weeks ago is this one. But as you guess, um, the mint is not hard to make. The cuttings of mint are super easy, so I'm trying to pull on it and not break it. 
and you see that's the cutting I made. So it's very very simple, gives you a nice mint. You can put in your classic garden. Okay, so I have planted all the uh, all the different cuttings in the setup, and we'll see in a week time, one or two weeks. And uh, now I'm going to plant those two boys here. So little mint, baby mint, that is quite nice, quite cute, and the little baby succulent. I'm going to plant them in the classic garden. So here you see it's an area that is uh, around my house and it's not very nice and uh, you see there are plenty of uh, plants that you normally don't want to see around uh, the garden. Uh, personally I don't like to kill plants, I'm not going to put any pesticides obviously, I don't want to spray anything. So the idea for me is to put a plant here that is going to be able to compete with those existing weeds as they, as they are called. Um, and a plant that I can use such as a mint because it smells amazing. So what I want is to plant a few mints and that's what I did. That's aquaponics mint that I planted here. It's growing really well. And I'm going to plant a few more. And the idea is to have this area here all covered with mint. Isn't it really cool? And as you can see the soil is very poor. It's not quality soil. But it's enough for the mint, because the mints are plants that are very easy to grow. Uh, so what I do, I sometimes do some little cuttings when I got a bit of room in my aquaponic system. I put them here. And as you can see, they grow really well. I got some everywhere. Um, so hopefully in a few months, all this is uh, mint everywhere. <laughs> hey, welcome. So we are now middle of June. And in Australia, this is winter. And remember, we did some cuttings. So right now, we're going to have a look at those cuttings. Now, if you are a gardener, you probably already know that winter is definitely not the good time to do any cuttings. However, for this experiment, I wanted to try to see if we could do anything in winter because aquaponics is giving some very good conditions. So I'm not sure if it's going to work. Probably most of uh, the trials we did I'm not going to deliver any cuttings, but we're still going to have a look if we are still able to have a few cuttings on some plants, even in winter. Well, in spring, if you do this in spring or in summer, you're going to have much better results. Ah. Here you see, we have a plant that uh, grew really nicely, nice roots, you see. So I'm very happy with this. It's a uh, it's an excellent result. This one is very interesting because that's a roses plant and as you can see we got some roots. So it's very interesting because it's going to give some uh, little uh, roses flowers. As we can see, it's, uh, it's growing very slowly, but at least it is. So as a result, we had four types of plants that grew really well. Uh, among them, we have the Echinacea. So on the Echinacea, as you can see, we have some nice little roots here. So in the middle of winter, quite good. We also had uh, the impatient. So the impatient, very nice flowers. As you can see, we got a nice root development on both of those. We have the roses. So the roses, you know how expensive roses can be, right? And this one developed some very nice roots. Now on the roses, most of the time um, 
the, the, the one you buy from the shop. There are two spaces, one for the roots, and then they cut it and uh, they put another type of rose on the top for the flowers. This one is, I, I have done it from uh, the, the top of the plant, which is exactly the type of flowers we want. So it's going to be a beautiful one. Just the roots, depending where you live, uh, they may be a bit, a bit more fragile than the one you buy from the shop, obviously, because they are not uh, the spaces that are the most uh, uh, the, the tougher, or so, sorry, the most adapted to survive in, in tough conditions. But anyway, uh, if it's growing well, you can plant it in your garden and it's probably going to grow really, really well. So really nice to have roses. And finally, we got this type of plant, uh, which I can't remember the name, to be honest, of this plant. Uh, it's a plant that, needs, that gives some really nice flowers as well. They look a bit like chamomile. Uh, let me know in the comment if you know if it's chamomile or if it's another type of plant that has nothing to do with chamomile. But I think they are very cute, those, those type of flowers. So anyway, that was just an example. Then uh, obviously you can do as many geraniums as you like and um, tomatoes. So tomatoes, I, I still have one here that I'm going to pull just to show you. That's again a cuttings I, I made uh, probably a few weeks ago. But we are in winter, so it's not growing at all. And uh, I'm not, I'm not going to grow anything from this. It was just for the experiment. I made a video about tomatoes and I show you how to make the cuttings, uh, but it's just one more. So just an example to show you what you can do with aquaponics, how you can uh, basically multiply the number of plants you have for your aquaponics system, but also for your classic garden, even trees, you can build ages with uh, just with an aquaponic system. You can, you can multiply and do a lot of cuttings in aquaponics. So I hope this video inspires you to uh, do your own cuttings, especially if you do them in uh, spring, you're going to have amazingly uh, better results than I did. So uh, don't hesitate. Every time you trim something, if you have uh, some pieces of, uh, of plants that you want to uh, uh, multiply, you can just put them back in the aquaponic system and grow some cuttings. If you want more information about aquaponics, I deliver uh, videos quite frequently. So subscribe to this channel. But you can also go to the website Aquaponics Revolution, where there I go in depth in all the topics I cover in my videos and I give you all the data that you need. So Aquaponics Revolution is the place to find the information you need about aquaponics. If you want to start your own aquaponic system, such as the one I have behind me, if you want to learn how to manage an aquaponic system, I highly recommend you to get the free aquaponics training from the link of the video just below from the description of the video just below. Uh, it's uh, actually a step-by-step -step training to help you to build your aquaponic system, but also to manage it in the best conditions. I see you in the next video. Bye-bye.